What's up guys, it's John here at DEFCON Sports um, by myself this time around. It won't be by myself every time, but here for the day one of the College Basketball Journal. That's what I'm going to call it because I'm on original. Anyway, um, the way this is going to work is I'm going to run through the biggest news of the College Basketball Day. Starting with the most important because that's how actual people do it. Uh, and it's the game that just ended. It's 11.45 Central as I'm recording this. Uh, and I just finished watching the overtime thriller between Indiana and Kansas. Uh, number three Jayhawks versus the number 11 Indian Hoosiers. And they were on a boat in the Armed Forces Classics. And, uh, well, it was back and forth throughout most of the game. Uh, you know, you saw a lot of fouls being called. Um, if I can get the ex exact number, it was... Uh, yeah, 62 fouls in the game. That's ridiculous. Um, you know, you ended up with multiple, uh, multiple starters on... <laughs> you ended up with multiple starters on both teams out. Uh, f but, man, the story of this game is that both of these teams are very good. Frank Mason ends up going for 30 points. He really led this Kansas team uh, because, you know, you had some, some guys had weaker games, you know. Uh... Uh, J Josh Jackson is the obvious one for Kansas. He uh, he 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 got nine points, but it, it was a very quiet nine points. He did not quite have the uh, he did not quite have the impact I was I was hoping he would for Kansas, and definitely not that what Kansas fans were hoping. But you know, Mikhail Luke had a good game, all things considered. Your boy Svi, uh, Landon Lucas kind of stepped up down the down the down the near the end of the game. Devontae Graham uh, was pretty good. Uh, he sank a couple big threes. But, man, the story here has got to be Indiana. Indiana is, uh, once again, I would say they're the second team, second best team in the Big Ten as the train rolls by. But uh, uh, I thought before Wisconsin was number one and Michigan State was two and Indiana was three. That would have been how I would rank it preseason. That's definitely that's definitely changed, not because of Michigan State, but because of Indiana. Thomas Bryant looked so good. He he was hitting threes. He ended up with 19 points and 10 rebounds with the double double. Uh, James Blackman Jr. He was kind of a scapegoat for the Indiana struggles throughout the early parts of last year. He he dropped 26 points. It was. It was an incredible, uh, you know, team effort. Curtis Jones, the freshman, he ended up with 15 points. He had three threes. You know, you this Indiana team ended up being, even even your boy OG ended up having a couple good good uh, parts as well. The game, uh, uh, the pit transfer, Josh Newkirk, he's not going to be Yogi Ferrell, and that's okay because they're not expecting him to. If Blackman and Bryant continue to play like this, and Anuna be, and you know, you have a random right freshman or two step up. Then I don't think I don't think they'll need Newkirk to be Yogi. If they can be, if he can do what he did today, and run run the point decently, while you know hopefully hitting a little bit more offense than he did today, then Indiana will be fine. What you know, definitely a great game between these two blue bloods of the sport. Uh, the second big game of the day would be Arizona versus Michigan State, and uh, I'll save you a bit of trouble because I didn't watch most of this game. Um, because I was watching Syracuse, I'll talk about them in a minute. But uh, but yeah, I'll just show you the game-winning play right here. Allen, coast to coast, got it. One point nine, tipped away, and it's over. All right, yeah. So uh. Kadeem Allen hits the game winner for Arizona. This was right after Tum Tum Nairn uh, managed to hit a three-pointer to tie it with only 10 seconds left. And, uh, yeah, this was really a battle between two surprising freshmen. Well, okay, for Michigan State, it wasn't surprising. Well, no, I guess for neither team it was surprising, but uh, Miles Bridges ends up leading Michigan State to a really good early start. They ended up up 17-2. to uh, basically, you know, at the jump. But uh, Arizona ends up coming back. Kobe Simmons, 18 points for him. He had a hell of a game. Um, one of my favorite, my personal favorite freshman, or at least favorite five-star freshman, your boy Laurie Markin in the Finn. 
Uh, he ends up with 13 points, 6 rebounds. He he looked pretty good as well. I could see this guy having a very Jakob Pertle like career, hopefully. Uh, yeah, he's a different player, but you know, I guess he's more like a Frank Kaminsky than anything. But uh, I liked I liked watching him so far, and uh, yeah, this one this one brought drama. It wasn't as high scoring of a game, but I think it was a better game overall from what I saw of it. Less fouls, less slippery floor condition. But yeah, the Armed Forces Classic gave us two classic games, I guess, between classic programs. So, you know, what more could you offer? It's like a it's like a poor man's Champions Classic at this point, which comes on Tuesday, and I'm excited for. Anyway, the other big story: <sighs> Wagner 67, Connecticut 58. What the hell happened here? This one was not on TV, not on Watch ESPN, so I had no way of watching any of this. But. Rodney Purvis goes for five points. Amita Brima goes for four points and five rebounds, and one block. I, I mean, basically, just looking at the box score, it looks like Connecticut got all of its offense from Terry Larrier and uh, Al Tariq Gilbert, and that's not good. That is not what you're expecting to see if you're UConn, and they end up taking an embarrassing loss here to. Wagner, who's one of the best teams in the, in the Northeast Conference, but that's like that's like Bama losing to Appalachian State because they're one of the best Sun Belt teams. That's okay, maybe not Bama, but it'd be like if Auburn did it or something or LSU. But that's not it's still not good. <laughs> it's not a good loss to take. This is gonna damage UConn's resume if they end up in the same situation as last year. So. <sighs> I, I said preseason that Cincinnati was going to be the best team in the American. And I'm starting to think I was correct, maybe. I'm starting to think I might have been correct with Cincinnati. Did I don't even know if Cincinnati played today. Um, I, yeah, I'll start by going through the conferences now and giving a few snippets. Uh, Syracuse, 83-55 uh, to over Colgate. I watched most of this game. Or no, I guess that's not true. I watched some of it. I was, you know, my mom came down for... Uh, for the Bama Mississippi State game tomorrow, and she, this is like a first time at the apartment, so I was showing her around a little bit, and so I'm and I missed a good portion of this game. But uh, from what I saw, Frank Howard looked really confident manning point guard. Uh, if he can if he can look as good as Benajay did, as far as just being a pure point guard, not without the scoring. Although Frank Howard did hit three threes, that would be really nice. I would like that. That would that would help this team a lot. Um. Tyus Battle and Torian Thompson didn't really do much, but the two grad transfers, Andrew White and John Gillen, looked very good. And, and Tyler Roberson also looked good, although he was playing against Colgate's front court, so that's hard to say. But he looks just as good of a rebounder and a finisher as he did last year, so I'm excited for that. Uh, Duke, Duke romps, Virginia romps, Louisville romps. Uh, North Carolina actually was in a little bit of a struggle early, but they pulled away from Tulane. They looked pretty good. Uh, NC State, my personal dark horse to uh, to be a top eight seed out of this conference. Uh, they kind of struggled with Georgia Southern, who's not a particularly good team, but uh, they end up winning 81 to 79. Miami blows by Western Carolina, uh, and then we start having some struggles. Well, all right, Clemson beats Georgia. That's a good win. Georgia is a potential tournament team out of the SEC, and Clemson gets a big win over them. Clemson with Jerron Blossom game could be a tournament team for sure. I, it would not surprise me in, in the slightest to see this team make their first tournament appearance in 2011. Uh, Pitt in double overtime beats Eastern Michigan. Uh, <laughs> Nichols beats Boston College. Okay, I know Boston College is not particularly good. But come on, <laughs> you got to beat Nichols. You got to beat Nichols, the Nichols State Colonels. That's not good. Um, in the American, not really much of a note really happened besides UConn. Cincinnati did play. They beat Brown. Uh, Tulsa ends up losing to Jacksonville State. It's going to be a rough year for them after losing all those seniors. And Temple beats LaSalle in a, uh, in a Big 5 game. Uh, the Big 12, uh, West Virginia romps, Iowa State romps, TCU beat a D2 team. I don't know why I even mentioned that. Texas, Josh's personal Final Four team, ends up beating Incarnate Word by five. So, good start there. <laughs> uh, in the Big Ten, not really much happened. Well, okay, no, no. I'd say there's two significant results from here. 
Maybe three if you count OSU beating Navy. But uh, Penn State goes down to Albany. Not that Albany's a particularly bad team, but they're not what they were a year or two ago. And uh, yeah, this, this, I don't want to say hyped freshman class, but not, a, you know, this hopeful freshman class, I guess. Ends up going down in the first game to the Great Danes. And then Maryland. Not sure what happened here, but they end up beating American University by six, and I'm pretty sure American's not all that good, so that's also some reason for concern there. Uh, in the Big East, Xavier beats Lehigh by three. Not sure how what happened there, but that's going to have to change. Creighton beats Kansas City by seven. Again, eh. St. John's, Seton Hall, Villanova, all romp, and Marquette beats Vandy by 24. That's a big win for the Golden Eagles and uh, Coach Waj. Yeah, I'm excited to see if Marquette can take the next step and become a tournament team once again because I, I kind of miss them being around every year. In the Pac-12, Oregon, USC, and USC are not done with their game, nor Stanford, but they all look like they're going to win, albeit not particularly good. Lonzo Ball is very good. Washington State is not very good. That's about all you need to know out of the Pac-12. Finally, the SEC, the Alabama Crimson Tide, my uh, my school, even though they're technically my second team. They uh, they were down at the half to Coastal Carolina. They pull away. Corbin Collins goes for 15. That's not the name I expected to stand out of the box score. Arkansas survives Fort Wayne. Florida wins. Uh, Ole Miss survives UT Martin. South Carolina beats La Tech. Kentucky wins big. Florida wins big, and Tennessee loses to UT Chattanooga. Good job, Tennessee. Um, I believe that is actually all we have here, um, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of a crash course. Um, actually, no, the rest of the top 25 games, if there's any I haven't mentioned. Wisconsin beat Central, Mich or Central Arkansas. I don't think I mentioned that one. Gonzaga beats Utah Valley. Purdue blows a pass McNeese. Um, and Rhode Island beats Dartmouth pretty easily. Uh, St. Mary's, I think, is currently playing. Yeah, they're beating. They're going to beat Nevada, though. So yeah, there you go. Um, that's it for the show. Normally, at the end of this show, I'd have you know maybe a reaction or two to some of the big games, but I don't have that this time around. So yeah, yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this, and I'll see you guys when I see you guys next.